Tammy Oldman wakes up on a boat that is flooding into the ocean. She immediately sets out to find her fiancé, Richard, but realizes he is no longer there and bursts into a cry. Five months ago, Tammy had just landed in a French island port, ready to immigrate to the country. Once she arrives, she answers the guard's routine questions in a very general way, not knowing precisely what she wants to do either. At work, she gets acquainted with a woman named Deb as they clean a boat. Shortly after that, she is joined by Richard in his boat, and as they introduce themselves, the two give him a hand in hooking up the boat. The following day, Tammy sees Richard working on his own boat and catches up with him, bringing him ice. He invites her to have dinner together, and she accepts, as long as it's a vegetarian dinner. Later that night, Richard tells her that he travels alone and how this kind of solitude brings many disadvantages with it. As they chat, Richard deduces that she is also a sailor. Tammy denies this. Nevertheless, he plans to have her drive the boat the next day. Despite her inexperience, she proves she is talented at sailing and they have a good time together. They continue their adventures together and Tammy takes him to a waterfall. She dives in the water, but Richard, not seeing her anymore, jumps in to rescue her to see if she's all right. He finds her and discovers that it's a simple prank. They find themselves on the beach, sitting on the seashore, where a kiss sparks between the two. Back to the present, Tammy tries to communicate the mayday through the radio, but to no avail. After moments of despair, she reflects on the fact that the boat is missing a lifeboat and immediately sets out to reach it. The boat does not start because the sails have fallen into the water. She proceeds to detach them, but falls into the water. After nearly choking on the ladder, she climbs back up and reaches the boat drifting away. She covers the holes with tape and finds several tools, including the boat's jib and a pump. Through the pump, she manages to get some water out and then, with some difficulty, unfurl the sails. Soon after, through the binoculars, she finally sees the lifeboat. She removes the sails, attaches herself to the boat with the rope, and reaches Richard, who is fortunately still alive. She takes him back on board and reassures him that everything will be all right. Let's go back to the past before the accident. Richard shows her a flower. It is the flower of love. And according to tradition, wearing it on the left ear means being romantically committed. Over dinner, she tells him about her adolescence and how her mother's absence influenced her experiences, leading her to travel the world as an adult. Following this, Tammy convinces him to dance with her. During the couple's dance, the man asks her if she would like to travel the world in his company, and of course she accepts. While shopping for groceries, they plan their next trip, but they encounter a couple on their way out of the supermarket. They are some of Richard's friends, and they come up with an exciting offer. Once they are seated at a bar, they offer to take their boat back to California in exchange for $10,000 and a first-class plane ticket back, a hard offer to refuse. But Richard says he will only accept an exchange for two tickets so he can take Tammy with him. Soon after, he catches up with Tammy, who, a little nervous, says she doesn't want to just follow him on his adventures. Moreover, she does not want to return to the very place from which she has been estranged in recent years. Richard, realizing that he may be being selfish, decides to decline the offer. After sailing so far to find her, he doesn't want to lose her just now. We return on the day of the accident. Richard is not in good shape at all, and Tammy covers his injuries. Tammy does some calculations and realizes that they have drifted too far away, heading north. Once she realizes the distance, she becomes demoralized, thinking they will die, and Richard tries to reassure her. However, the man has a hunch. They do not have to go back to touch the land. Looking at the map, they conclude that they must reach Hawaii if they want to save themselves. The real problem, however, is that it will be very risky since if they miss the target, the nearest destination would then be too far away. Nevertheless, they decide to try. Back during the good days, the couple find themselves on a couple's luxury boat, and after a chat with the latter, they discuss their future. Fortunately, Tammy decided to go with him anyway. Richard explained to her that they would have the funds to travel for a whole year with the financial compensation. Tammy writes a letter to her mother, announcing her imminent return. As they travel, a particular red sunset arrives, and they joke about the exact name of its color. This detail will prove crucial later on, 
but they don't know it yet. Returning to the ongoing tragedy, they can rely on some food and water found on the boat, but it will not be enough for the duration of the journey. Five days into the drift, they realize they have gone a bit off course and Tammy decides to fix the rudder as the cause of the problem. She puts on a diving mask, dives into the water, and notices that a piece of the sail is stuck. After a few attempts, using strength with her hands and legs, she finally manages to remove it. Five days later, he finds a face cream, and after putting it on both of them, he checks Richard's wounds. There is not much food left. They have to fish for something, so as not to risk starvation. Tammy, for her part, refuses to eat it, as she is a vegetarian, which would go against her ideals. Richard makes her understand that this is not the right time for such tantrums. She must do it anyway for their survival. She takes courage and plunges into the water, but the first attempt fails and she comes back up. She tries again, but the result is the same, and she climbs back into the boat crying. Soon after, Tammy meditates, sitting on the boat. It starts to rain, and she is on cloud nine, delirious with joy. 18 days into the drift, looking for objects around the boat, she finds wine, and they get back, if only for a moment, in touch with humanity by celebrating and drinking. A few days pass, and as Tammy plays the guitar and sings, Richard tells her that he wishes he had never met her. That way, he would not have put her in this situation. On the other hand, Tammy does not regret it. In fact, she will carry these memories forever. In the evening, Richard dabbles with the same instrument, and Tammy asks him if he wants to talk to her about his mother's early death. He agrees and tells how he has internalized this trauma, imagining how his mother would judge him by seeing him in certain situations. The fiance then asks what his mother thinks of all that is happening. In response, he proposes marriage to her. She willingly accepts and puts on a handmade ring created in those days. Richard promises to buy a real one once they arrive in the States. 29 days into the drift, during the night, Tammy has a hallucination where a vast ship passes right next to them without stopping. She realizes she's delusional and they are both demoralized. For Richard, the only positive note is that despite dehydration, distance, and all, they are not dead yet. A few days later, while helping him to drink, Tammy reports that there are about 690 miles to go. Let's go back to the day it all started. At some point, they are told on the radio that a thousand miles away from them is the center of a storm. As a precaution, they decide to change plans and modify the course to avoid the storm. A few hours later, they find themselves in the middle of it and do everything they can to save themselves. In the present, Tammy notices a sky identical to the one at the beginning of the journey and senses that something is coming. Fortunately for them, it was only a blizzard. Tammy tells them how, as a child, when her relatives were fighting, she would lock herself inside the tub, imagining that she was somewhere else. So, she proposes to do the same thing now. As they're tossed around by the ocean, Tammy picks up the emergency locator transmitter so they can report their location. They continue to do everything they can not to die, and Richard tells her to go down as they might tip over. She does not want to leave him alone, but goes down anyway. Once she gets there, she is thrown to the other side of the bottom floor because of the waves. Richard, on the other hand, falls to the bottom of the ocean after losing consciousness. After the flashback is over, Tammy wakes up, realizing the stark truth of their facts. Richard, after the accident, was never with her. They were just hallucinations, typical of those traveling alone. She actually experienced all the tragedy without Richard, but this illusion gave her strength. She goes down into the water to hunt for fish. This time, she succeeds at the first strike and comes back up. She eats it despite being against her ideals. Suddenly, a little bird catches up with her and she cannot explain what it's doing there. She uses binoculars and the miracle seems to happen. She sees dry land in the distance. She wastes no time and uses a pyrotechnic gun, attracting a ship that immediately rescues her. Sometime later, she returns to visit the boat and looking at pictures brings back all the good memories she had together with Richard. She bursts into tears and looks around. She even finds a flower he had given her. She reaches the beach where they first kissed. Once she reaches the seashore, leaves the flower in the water in memory of her deceased boyfriend. After that day, Tammy 
never stop sailing. Like and subscribe for more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.